Now that we've gone through the basics of Flexbox, I wanted to share with you some more practical applications of how we could use Flexbox building websites. There are all sorts of useful ways in which you can use Flexbox, and I'm sure you'll find it to be one of your most commonly used development tools as you continue to develop websites. I did want to give you some ideas and examples of some commonly used design patterns that Flexbox can help you to solve beautifully and elegantly. In this section of the course, we'll look at some of the most common use cases for Flexbox, those places where it makes more sense than any other layout method. We'll be looking specifically at navigation, split screen, and a holy grail layout. There are many other ways in which you could use Flexbox, but hopefully by building these, you'll become more familiar and get some ideas. Let's start off by working with navigation. A common pattern for navigation is to have a list of items displayed as a horizontal bar. This pattern, as basic as it seems, was difficult to achieve before Flexbox. It forms the most simple of Flexbox examples, and it could be considered an ideal Flexbox use case. When we have a set of items that we want to display horizontally, we may well end up with additional space. We need to decide what to do with that space, and we have a couple of different options. We can either display the space outside of the items, therefore spacing them out with white space between or around them, or we absorb the extra space inside the items, and therefore need a method of allowing the items to grow and take up space. Enter Flexbox. Let's look at how we can build out these various navigational elements. The first navigation that we're going to build is going to contain items that are equally spaced throughout the navigation bar. As you can see, this is the HTML that I'm currently using. I have a nav with a class of nav1, it's wrapped around an unordered list, and the list items are an image, the text, and another link that has a class of button. In regards to the CSS I'm using, I have some styles that are formatting the text, the link, the button, and the navigation. What we'll do is we'll start off and turn this into our navigational component. I'm gonna start off by targeting the unordered list that is a child of nav1. What we'll do here is we're simply going to tell this to display as a flex container. Just by doing this, the items are going to appear side by side instead of appearing stacked on top of each other. Now we just need to add some alignment. So to do this, I'm going to use my align items. This will allow me to vertically center all of the content. And then we're going to use justify content. And I'm going to plug in space around. As you recall, justify content controls the horizontal alignment of items. When I refresh, you can see that my navigation now looks much better. All of the items are taking up equal space. If my page is resized, everything is just going to continue to spread out and use the space around feature. This solution might work well where you have a navigational element that has a fixed width. It can be a little challenging if your navigation pane gets too wide because you might just get too much space in between the items. Let's look at an example that's slightly different. For the next example, what I want to do is I want my logo and the button to appear on the far edge of the navigation, but I want the links to be more centered. In order to accomplish this, I'm going to have to change my HTML slightly. Now I've already created the HTML, so let me just uncomment this out. And as you can see, this HTML is somewhat similar. The only difference is that my logo, the image, is not inside of the unordered list and neither is the button. They reside outside of the unordered list. If we save the page and look at it in the browser, this is what the page is going to look like. As you can see, we need some CSS so that we can rein this in. I'll go into my style file and I'm going to make a rule for the nav item. So I'm gonna target the navigation with a class of nav2. We're going to have this display as flex. Then we're going to use align items center and justify content space between. If we save and refresh, you can see that now the logo and the button are on the far edges of the navigation, which was where I want them to be. The navigation, however, is still stacked vertically. And that's because Inside of this element, we are applying flex on the navigation. Remember that flex only affects the direct descendants. So in this case, the A, the UL, 
and the following A element. What we're going to need to do here is we're going to nest flex behavior. So we still want the unordered list to act as a flex item. So what I'll do is I'll target that item by using nav2 space ul. All we're going to do here is we're going to tell this to display as flex and we'll use our justify content center. This is going to center the list items all together. Now, as you can see, they are a little tight, so I'm just going to simply use a little bit of margin to create some spacing between those. Once again, I'm going to use .nav2, then li, and for this, we'll just go ahead and we'll set the margin to be zero for the top and the bottom, and one M for the right and the left. Now, if we refresh the page, you can see that these items have space between them and they stay centered in the middle of the navigation bar. The other two items are always going to stay locked at the far edges. So by combining Flexbox and actually nesting the Flexbox behavior, we can achieve something like this. For my next example, I have HTML that mimics the first example exactly. So we have a nav, this time it has a class of nav3, it contains an unordered list and all of the items are children of the list. What we'll do here is we'll target the nav3 ul element. I'm going to tell this to display as flex. I'm going to align items to the center to control their vertical centering. And I'm going to use justify content flex start, which of course is the default behavior, but I'm just going to put it here so we're clear on what we're doing. Finally, I'm going to use the gap property. The gap property will allow me to create some spacing between the elements. When I refresh, you can see that everything is on the left-hand side, and now there is some spacing between all of the elements. Now, in order to get this to appear the way I want, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the logo to the far right. Because the navigation element is a flex element, I can use my order property to control that element. I'll go ahead and target the first element by using .nav3 li colon first child, and I'm going to tell it to have a order of one. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that this simply reorders the items. I'm going to actually do something very similar for the last child, which is our join us button. If we target .nav3, and this time I'll use a selector of li colon last child. And because we want this to appear first, I'm going to use an order value of negative one. If I save and refresh, you're going to see how these have been flipped. Now I just wanna put the logo over to the right. In order to accomplish this, we're going to use a little trick. I'm going to set my margin left to auto. When you're using flex and you use margin left or right on an element of auto, it is going to go ahead and just push that element to the far opposite direction. Basically auto is gonna take up all of the available space that it can. So in this particular example, you can see how it now forces the logo to reside on the right hand side of the navigation and the other elements are going to stay on the far left. I have one final example to share with you. So let me just go ahead and uncomment out my code. And once again, I'm using the exact same HTML that we were using for example one and example three. The only difference is we have a unique class. I'll save the page. We'll go into our CSS and I'm going to target the unordered list. Once again, we're going to use display flex, align items of center, and this time we'll use justify content flex end. In addition, I'm going to create a gap of 1M. As you can see, all of the items are going to appear on the far right. All I wanna do now is grab the logo and bring it back to the far left. So we'll use the trick that I just showed you with the margin auto. I'll target the first child and then we'll simply add a margin right of auto. When we save and refresh, you can see how now the navigation appears exactly how I described. So all of these have subtle differences. They're all using flex in some way. 
and the basic HTML is pretty much the same, but you can see how by using Flex in a different manner, we can get very different results. There are hundreds of other ways that you could create navigation. This is just to get you up and running and give you some ideas of how flexible Flexbox is.